Hey there, marketing analytics students. In this video series, we're going to learn about data-driven market segmentation. But before we get into that, let's do a quick review on what market segmentation even is. You might recall from your introductory text that market segmentation is just subdividing a market into distinct subsets of customers. And it's the first critical step in the traditional segmentation, targeting, and positioning process that we use in marketing. We know that we've successfully engaged in market segmentation when all the members of the market are different between the different segments, but they're similar within the segment that they belong to. In other words, the phrase homogeneous within and heterogeneous between. Let's illustrate what I mean by that. Let's imagine that we're Delta Airlines and we need to segment our market. And we'll use the characters in the game Guess Who as representatives of our market. Well, first, of course, we have to define the market overall. And perhaps Delta might say that the market is people who are not bald. So immediately we just exclude Richard, Sam, Herman, Bill, and Tom from our marketing segmentation scheme. Sorry, guys. And then in dividing up the market, Delta could characterize segment A as people that have blue eyes. So Alfred, Anita, Robert, and Peter. And then in this weird guess who children's game paradigm where people only have two different eye colors, segment B could be brown eyed people and that covers the entire rest of the market. And Delta could entirely build its entire marketing plan around targeting non-bald people with blue eyes or non-bald people with brown eyes. And of course, that makes something else immediately apparent. It's very easy to do market segmentation, but it can be very hard to actually do market segmentation that genuinely aids in management understanding, decision-making, and marketing actions. And that leads to the next question. Well, what constitutes a good market segmentation scheme? Well, it has to meet the first minimum criteria of the homogeneity within the segment and the heterogeneity across the segments. In addition, we want to make sure that the segments that we, just, that we characterize are substantial enough in size. And of course, what exactly substantial enough in size means is a function of the underlying financial uh, situation of the firm and the particular context that it's evolving in. But we do want to keep in mind, are these segments that we're creating very tiny or very large? In addition, an important feature of a good marketing segmentation scheme is that we think each one of the segments will be responsive to different types of marketing mixes. In other words, the way that we communicate and promote and distribute to our customers will be different because they'll behave differently. Their mind in relation to our product, brand, service, or experience is fundamentally different from people in the other markets. Finally, we need to make sure that our market segments in the way that they're described and characterized are accessible and actionable to us. By accessible, that means not only do we know what's inside their mind and how we should com communicate to them, but we should actually be able to reach them. So that means when we purchase our media, we have some mechanism that allows us to target those individuals. And actionable, meaning that when we define the market segment, they're defined in such a way that we can actually make decisions about our marketing mix that are useful to us. Okay, so we briefly did a reboot on what market segmentation is and what constitutes good market segmentation. If you need to learn more, well, go ahead and check out your introductory marketing principles text, of course. But now that we've laid down the groundwork of what segmentation is, we can now explore the issue of what constitutes data-driven market segmentation and why it's possible that it can meet this criteria of engaging in good market segmentation.